Hello, welcome to the second talk of this morning session. Um, up next is uh, Juliette Flecheux, who studied at the Institut Supérieur des Arts et du Design de Toulouse and Atelier National de Recherche Typographique, or ANRT. And she is going to talk to you about the Scriptorium de Toulouse and the important work she's doing uh, documenting its history. Please welcome Juliette Flecheux. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yeah? Oh, thanks. Thank you uh, very much to Witpai for having me. Uh, it's quite impressive, I, uh, I confess, but uh, it will be fine, I'm sure. Uh, so my name is Juliette Flecheux, and uh, I'm graphic designer. And the goal of this talk is to introduce you to, uh, to this uh, little-known history the role and uh, the influence of the Scriptorium de Toulouse, and to introduce you to the teaching of Bernard Arin, who was the last director of this type design and calligraphy atelier created in the southwest of France, um, of the French city of Toulouse in uh, 1967 and closed in 2005. I studied my research in 2018 at the Beaux-Arts of Toulouse, and I pursued it uh, at the Atelier National de Recherche Typographique from uh, 2019 to 2021, which led to the publication of, of Dossier Scriptorium de Toulouse, um, a pedagogy of the written and drawn letter, a book co-published by uh, Edition 205 and uh, the INRT. This moment in which we found uh, ourselves all together after, once again after the pandemic is also an opportunity to finally pay a proper long overdue tribute to this pedagogue, too little known, that was Bernard Arin and who passed away so suddenly in 2019. So the history, role, and influence of uh, the scriptorium de Toulouse are little known in France and abroad, mostly because of a lack of uh, information and documentation. And this is what, one of the reasons why I initiate this research. Before delving into the history of the atelier, uh, I think it's important to have a global overview of the French typographic historical context that preceded its opening. So type design um, context in France from 1999 to 1974 was very unstable. And by the end of the 70s, the French type design industry was on the verge of collapse. From the mid 15th century until the end of the 19th century, the main way to save type was by hand. And in France, the social economic changes that took place in the wake of the Second World War had a profound effect on all areas of society. The industry was uh, were in ruins or uh, at best obsolete. Paradoxically, the post-war period was characterized by the great optimism and the booming market conditions uh, in the French printing industry. Most of the country printing uh, company um, had been destroyed and lead type uh, had been melted down and used as raw material for the manufacture of ammunition. It was therefore necessary to restock the workshops with both typefaces and machines. And the new products uh, were, uh, in fact, very, very low in the list of priorities. So at the end of the 50s, the, the industry was about to be shaken by major uh, technical changes, which marked the gradual end of the lead type. During the first half of the 20th century, French foundries missed the transition to hot metal type settings. A few decades later, hot metal gave way to photocomposition, which marked a significant uh, shift in the industry. Developed by these two French engineers, Louis Moirou and René Ogonet, 
from the mid uh, 1940s on one, the Lumitype was a revolutionary uh, photocomposing machine that used photographic process to compose text. On this subject, uh, I can just highly recommend you uh, the PG of uh, Alice Savoy. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's a really uh, complete uh, PhD uh, about it. The two engineers uh, struggled a lot to find the funding necessary uh, for its construction, which led them to the United States, where they developed the Lumitype with the company Photon under the name Lumitype Photon. This event, among many others, had technological and technological advances had a major impact on the typographic design market. This profound crisis um, precipitates the closure of uh, the main French type foundries, uh, the Bernier Peignot, then the Fonderie Typographique Française, then the Fonderie Olive, and finally the Fonderie Oldenstein, but uh, because, uh, because of the sudden uh, death of uh, Albert Oldenstein. 1982 was a turning point uh, in the history of uh, typography in France. It was time for reconstruction. And in October of 1979, a letter from Charles Peignot to Georges Bonan, then director of the Imprimerie Nationale, sounded the alarm. French typography was uh, on the verge of disappearing and a plan of action was needed to save it. This plan was first carried out by an informal group, uh, the CERT, Centre d'études et de recherche typographique, which gathered the main protagonists of the French-speaking type design scene. The group met regularly to draft an ambitious plan to revive the industry, which soon led to a new political dimension. The issues raised during these CERT's meetings have been heard and you can see here the Minister for Culture, Jacques Lang, uh, over here. Uh, he committed uh, to the creation of an interministerial group for graphic design and typography, GIGT, Group Interministerial pour le Graphisme et la Typography, in hope, he said, that a broad plan for the rescue and revival of typography can, be, can quickly be developed. Then, working group were formed, gathering professionals such as Bernard Arin, Gérard Blanchard, Albert Botton, Nicole Croix, Roger Druet, Adrienne Frittiger, and so on. What were the ambitions of this recovery plan? It aimed, first of all, to preserve and promote typographic creation in France based on three ideas. First one, to provide professionals with means for creation and research in the, in the field. Then the creation of an Atelier National de Création Typographique within the Primary National and stimulate the teaching of uh, writing within the educational system. And then to develop job opportunities. At the time, there were very few places in France to learn graphic design and type design. The École des Beaux-Arts of Besançon and Toulouse were two of them. Here you can see Gérard Blanchard, Chancellor of uh, the Rencontre de Lure. He was also head of the Visual Communication Department of the École des Beaux-Arts of Besançon. From November 10th to 14th, 1982, the Rencontre de Lure and the École des Beaux-Arts of Besançon organized an, a large-scale symposium, Écriture, Typography, Pédagogy, on writing, lettering, and calligraphy, gathering more than 150 profe professionals. The program was very rich, and the first day was devoted to teaching uh, of writing and typography. You can see here on the right of Gérard Blanch Blanchard, uh, Bernard Arin, uh, he joined them for roundtable discussion, and he was, at this time, recently named director of the Scriptorium de Toulouse. Um, and on this occasion, he announced the forthcoming reopening of the, the atelier, closed for the, the nine, 
the past nine years, but I will get, get back to this point a bit later. A parallel with the scriptorium can be drawn with a similar pedagogy uh, in Netherlands at the same time. And this is the pedagogy of Gerrit Molzai and its influence in the Royal Academy of The Hague. It has a similar role, but its ideas and history were more widely spread. Gerrit Molzai, who passed away on March 17, 2022, uh, had, was a leading figure in the field of tap design. He was teacher of type design, calligraphy, and graphic design at uh, the Royal Academy in The Hague between 1960 and 1990. He left a strong mark on the teaching at the KBK, as most of the current teacher at uh, Type and Media master's degree are uh, themselves former students. And by putting Bernard Arins and Gerrit Mozai pedagogies into, into perspective, the publication mentioned uh, earlier, the Scriptum de Toulouse, uh, waves a typographic link uh, between these two, these two approaches, focuses on the relationship in between uh, typography and gesture. After this quick overview, we can now, and you can now better understand the, the, the history and the context in which it took place and it was created. So this story spans from 1967 to 2005. It has been punctuated by a certain number of closures, uh, which have led to oblivion and the disappearance of the archives. There were two main periods. The first one is the creation uh, of the atelier and the direction by André Vernet within the École euh, des Beaux-Arts of Toulouse. And the second period uh, of notable activity is, the, is not noted by the takeover of the direction by Bernard Arin until the closure of the atelier. During this first period from 1967 to 1973, the teaching of type design was reintroduced um, at the Beaux-Arts uh, of Toulouse following the creation of the atelier by André Vernet to respond to a need um, expressed by the students who had completed their first degree at the Beaux-Arts. André Vernet was an architect. He was also the urban planner uh, of the city of Toulouse and painter, very gift in drawing, but mostly passionate about Latin polygraphy. Indeed, until the 50s, um, students from the general courses uh, of, um, at the Boza had the choice between three departments, uh, art, communication, and design. In 1954, the first cycle of study in French art schools was sanctioned by a new diploma, and following this reform, a graphic art department uh, was created and its responsibility as, was entrusted to André Vernet, professor at the Beaux-Arts in 1949. In 1967, a few students uh, from the graphic art department, Claude Media Villa, François Boltana and Alain Chavard, all passionate about handwriting and calligraphy suggest to the teacher, André Vernet, the creation of an atelier speci specifically for type design to continue the, their study and perfect their skills. They had already done calligraphy during the um, general courses, but what they really want to do at this time was type design. For André Vernet, to learn type design, it was necessary to start from a paleographic knowledge of the letter and a training, training the hand. Um, and not from this kind of drawing, uh, ge ge geometric tracing that you can see uh, over here. André Vernet proposed the idea uh, to the di then director, Joseph Andro, and recognizing the motivation of this group of students, he approved the creation of a specialized atelier firstly called Scriptorium de la Ville de Toulouse. 
The atelier was officially created in 1969, sorry, and Bernard Arin, who had been professor at the Beaux-Arts since 1965, became André Vernet's assistant. In 1968, to officialize its existence, the atelier was finally named Scriptorium de Toulouse. Two students designed its foundation plaque, and the two students being Claude Medevilla, who designed the letters, and Jacques Galzin, who engraved them into the stone. André Vernet had close relationship with Maximilien Vox, chancellor and creator of the Rencontre de Lure. You can uh, see them just uh, sitting next to each other in the background, and André Vernet is just on, on the bottom. This relationship will be maintained and perpetuated between Bernard Arin and Gérard Blanchard in a strip shirt, who will succeed uh, Maximilien Vox. In August 1969, thanks to André Vernet's uh, relationships, the students of the first prom of the scriptorium went to the Rencontre um, in the south of France, and among the students present here from left to right, so we have Bernard Arin, a teacher at, at the time, Louis Ojeda, Marie Rose Adam, uh, François Boltana, Claude Mediavilla, Jacques Galzin, André, so director and teacher, Christian Dupuis, and Alain Chavard. By participating to this kind of congress, such as the Rencontre de Lure or at Pai as well, the atelier has created a reputation among all professionals in the field. During, during the Rencontre de Lure in 1969, the students showed their project um, in an exhibition. We can see here a composition made by Claude Mediavilla, Media which was shown during the event. On that same occasion, Ladislas Mandel encouraged the students to focus on the creation of typeface for body text. Among the few archivals, archival materials that testify to the beginning of the history of the atelier, we can observe that many alphabet primer were produced. The, the disappearance of French foundries a decade earlier I deprived a generation of designers the opportunity to publish typefaces. Young talents such as Claude Mediavilla turned to calligraphy, while others turned to stone carving. However, in 1970, the student efforts were reward. François Boltana, Anna Chavard, and Christian Dupuis received the first prize of the Concours Général des Arts Plastiques et des Arts Appliqués, award by Roger Excoffon, president of the jury. The alphabet primer designed by um, François Boltana on the top right shows the typeface Geneviève, which was published in 1969 by Studio Lundstein. In the 70s, opportunities to publish uh, typefaces were almost inexistent. And with the exception of the Letra Set or Mechanoma competition, which allows this company to re regularly fill the catalogues with the new design that were mostly display typefaces. And the students of the scriptorium de Toulouse were aware of the professional opportunities offered by the dry transfer lettering market. Then the atelier specialized um, in design of dry transfer lettering for Mechanoma and Letra Set. The name and typeface of, of scriptorium students can be found on this uh, 1972 Mechanorma catalog. We can see Patricia Sicre and the typeface Egide, Jean-Louis Rey and the Stylus, Jean-François Dussanti and the Spiral. In 1971, um, Bernard Arin left his teaching position uh, at the Scriptorium de Toulouse and devoted himself to freelance graphic design and advertising. The same year, uh, the then director of the Beaux-Arts, Joseph Andrew, retired and André Vernet succeeded him as the director of the school. 
and the script are unclosed its door for the very first time. The second key moment in the activity of the scriptarium is, of course, its reopening in 1982, directed by Bernard Arin until its closure in 2005. Who was Bernard Arin? He was a French graphic designer, illustrator, and calligrapher. He was an active member of uh, Etapai and uh, the Rencontre Internationale de Lure. After studying uh, at the Beaux-Arts de Toulouse, he became teacher of graphic design between 1964 and 1999, and then teaching, teacher of type design uh, and calligraphy by assisting André Vernet uh, in the atelier. And uh, in 1982, he took over the direction of the atelier. On August 12th, in uh, 2019, Bernard Arin suddenly uh, passed away, and on the strength of his experience, he passed on a specific know-how and practice of typography and left a strong mark on the French typographic scene, as most of his former students are now the teachers and renowned uh, designers. Bernard Arin also led numerous um, workshops in France and abroad, as, as an example, he organized a calligraphy workshop at the Rencontre de Lure in 1984 with François Boltana and Jean-Claude Lamboreau, and for which he self-published this manual, which was given to the participant. This manual shows the approach of Bernard Arin and follows the story of an evolution uh, of the Latin uh, writing system. Bernard Arin uses the Roman capital as a fundamental basis for learning um, and as a bridge between calligraphy and engraving, uh, which he does not distinguish. He was calling this calligravure, cali engraving, but I'm not sure about the translation, but yeah. As mentioned earlier, from the 10th to the 14th November 1982, Bernard Arid attended uh, the Symposium Écriture, Typography, Pédagogie at the Ecole uh, des Beaux-Arts of Besançon, where he announced the forthcoming reopening of the, the atelier. And Bernard Arid would later say and declare, André Vernet asked me to present the atelier that had been closed for years. I had nothing to show other than a vast desert. At the beginning of the 1982 school year, the Scriptorium de Toulouse reopened, welcoming a first class composed by Yannick Durand, Kitty Sabatier, Franck Jallo, and Eric Valla. The later two students um, later presented works of stone carving for the degree exam. That was quite unexpected at this time. Two years after the reopening of the atelier, it, it was already under threat. Bernard Arin was very concerned by the issues raised a few years earlier by Charles Pénieu, and so he began to seek support uh, of the best professionals to maintain the independence and the, the educational autonomy of the atelier. In this open letter to Jacques Lang, Minister of Culture, Gérard Blanchard claims the merits and the role of the scriptorium and states, we have just been informed of the threatened closure of the scriptorium de Toulouse, which trains graphic designers specialized in lettering. The current renaissance of calligraphy in France is largely due to it. To establish a, a national atelier for Typographic creation, Atelier National de Création Typographique, it is essential to ensure the training of students likely to come and work there. The future of our typography depends on this. In a letter addressed to Bernard Arin, José Mendoza claims, I always refer to your teaching and mention Toulouse as the only place where lettering and calligraphy are taught so well. 
These supports were not enough to maintain the independence of the scriptorium, which was absorbed by the communication department of the École des Beaux-Arts uh, in 1984. Bernard Arin never gave up, and at the beginning of the 1985-86 school year, to regain the studio uh, independence, he proposed an ambitious three-year training program that you can see here. Judged too professional by the admin administration of the Beaux-Arts, this proposition has been refused and reduced to six months. Despite all these twists and turns, Bernard Arin continues to teach graphic design in uh, the communication department. Unofficially, he was also teaching type design and calligraphy within the option based on the study of historical model and Latin paleography. The students were also practicing stone carving during workshop in a very relaxed way. And the program was also cover graphic art, composition, color, illustration, and so on, which were essential and complementary to train uh, graphic designer and type designer. Here you can see a class photo of the 90, of the 88, sorry, 89 prom, where the two, the two teachers are probably posing, uh, surrounded by the students, and you can see Bernard Arin on the center top, and Bernard Pages, the teacher of drawing and sculpture, on the bottom. Despite the appearances, the administration keeps um, resisting Bernard Arin's ambitions. And for Bernard Arin, this was no longer possible. In order to provide a quality, a quality training in good condition, he decided to officially transfer the scriptorium to his home in 1988. The, the atelier then became private and regained its autonomy and independence. The ambition and pedagogical uh, requirement remained the, the same. Um, and the program of this traditional graphic arts school was divided into courses of composition, color, uh, layout, Latin paleography, calligraphy, stone carving, type design. And here you can see on this uh, photograph, um, Rodolphe Giuliardo with the yellow shirt. He, he is a former student of the scriptorium, and at this time, he was then teaching type design. What makes this training uh, so special uh, is that Bernard Arin sometimes proposed an a la carte program according to the profile of each student. Here is an overview uh, of his own historical model. Uh, he self-published this manual in 1988. Bernard Arin's view was that a true understanding of type design required uh, a knowledge of calligraphy and historical models. He paid a particular attention to letterform strength and to the tension of the curve. A research program conducted at the scriptorium um, particularly echoes um, these very important notions for Bernard Arin. Based on phonetic research conducted uh, by a two-year intern, Denis Lefebvre, in 1991, the phonography of writing was then proposed as a research project to the student to study the, the influence of the sound on the shapes. The scriptorium de Toulouse has trained numerous people, graphic designer, artist, type designer, calligrapher. And as the scriptorium was private, um, there was no official diploma. And instead, the, student, the students received this uh, little pin at the end uh, of the studies. Among the former students, we can mention Claude Mediavilla, who actually received the Prix Charles Peignot in 1982, uh, created in the same year by Eta Pail. François Boltana, Kitty Sabatier, 
Fabienne Verdier, Franck Jalot, François-Marie Mallet, Séverine Amot, Rodolphe Juliardo et Xavier Dupré. Most of these people trained at the scriptorium um, later joined uh, the Atelier National de Création Typographique, created in 1985, nowadays known as uh, Atelier National de Recherche Typographique. And among the students, we can name Franck Jalot, Adeline Foucault, Rodolphe Juliardot, Thierry Puyfoulou, Bruno Folia, François Leroy, François-Marie Mallet, and Séverine Tayad. Bernard Arins devoted his life to teaching and transmission until 2005, when he retired. Uh, he even kept teaching from time to time uh, in other schools. He, no he never stopped his fight, as he called it, uh, to maintain the activity of the atelier. In 2018, um, during a visit at the Scriptorium de Toulouse, I had an overview of his uh, passion for transmission on the very blackboard that he used during uh, all these years uh, of teaching. The scriptorium has played a key role in the plan of revival typography in France acted in 1982. The importance of this history can be measured by the many people who have been trained uh, there. After the collapse of the French foundries, uh, it was these people who turned to type design and who actively contribute to the plane, um, to the plane of revival. In turn, these people, uh, designers, calligraphers, and stone carvers, created training courses and workshops to pass on their knowledge. I can go further in detail um, into this very rich history and education. Uh, the bilingual book, Dossier Scriptorium de Toulouse, shed light on this uh, extraordinary ped pedagogical adventure. It immerses in Bernard Arin's teaching through his historical model and released archives and reviews the historical context previously mentioned, thanks to fabulous contribution uh, of Manuel Sesma Prieto, Thomas Marchand, Jan Middendorp. And we also can find numerous testimonies of former students that allow us to immerse ourselves uh, in this pedagogy over the time um, and drawing a portrait of this pedagogue and ambitious teacher with a strong temperament. In addition, through a discussion, we, uh, in between Mathieu Corta, Laura Messege, and Emily Rego, um, they bring also the point of view on the teaching of type design um, today and the evolution of the profession. Thank you very much. We run it. We're running a little late, so we're going to quickly turn over. Um, no questions. I'm really sorry about this. We have to stick to the program. So you have time to change rooms if you need to, and we will continue as quickly as we can.